Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick sensor tutorial, I'll be showing you how to connect the MPU 9250 accelerometer and gyro and magnetometer with the Raspberry Pi in Python. And so by the end of this, we will be able to get values in those uh, nine degrees of freedom in Python with this device. And hopefully in the next video after this, I will show you how to calibrate it and make those values more accurate. So enough being said, without further ado, we're just going to jump into it here. So I imagine you have the device at hand if you are already watching this video and you have a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B, but really to follow along, you can use any Raspberry Pi from one to five. And also you, ha you have to have a set of jumper wires, which is typically something you should have by now if you are working in this space. So once you have your jumper wires, make sure they are fresh jumper wires because a lot of the times people can have issues with, with communication or the device not working. And that could be because the jumper wires are bad. That actually happened to me today. So make sure you do have some uh, good jumper wires that are tight and fit nicely on the pins. So we just want to establish the connection here, the physical connection between the MPU9250 and the Raspberry Pi here. So you just want to connect those respectively as you could see in the diagram there. And what we have is we just have the VCC and the ground to manage power on the device, obviously. And then we also have the STL and SDA pins as well. These are characteristic of I squared C communication. If you're absolutely new in the space and this is your first time seeing SCL and SDA, you're going to be seeing a lot if you are going to be working with Raspberry Pis and Arduinos because it's essentially the most common communication protocol for these devices and other devices, not just accelerometers. So it typically requires two jumper wires connected to the SCL and SDA pins. And of course, those lead to the SCL and SDA pins on the Raspberry Pi as well. So it can interpret those signals from the device accordingly. So once you have those four jumper wires connected, be sure not to mix them up because it won't work if you're following along or you especially don't want to mess up the VCC and the ground connections because that can lead to issues in circuitry if you mess up the ground and the power. So be careful with that, especially. So once you have that and you have it plugged into power, the next thing you want to do is if this is your first time working with the Raspberry Pi in any sensor is you just want to enable I squared C communication on the Raspberry Pi. So you actually have to do that. So you have to go to the Raspberry Pi configuration here on the top left and there's an interface here and you just want to enable I squared C. I already have it enabled and you want to click okay. And not only that, you want to actually reboot the device. So you can actually go here, go to log out and click restart after that and actually restart the device for it to be enabled or ensure it's enabled because sometimes you will check that I squared C ticker and you will click okay and it still will not be enabled. So just be sure to reboot it just to make sure that is working. And so the next thing we have is we just want to install the required libraries to get this thing working on the system level and on the Python level. Okay, so we just want to go up here to a little terminal. Let's just open that. And let's just expand this so you guys could see. And I'm actually going to zoom in real quick. Give me a moment. Oop. I think it's Control Shift Plus. There we go. Let me just zoom in for you guys to make sure it's as clear as possible. And so the first thing you want to do is you just want to update your apt installer so this is the system level installer on the actual raspberry pi so you just want to write sudo apt to get update so this is good practice to do when you are working with your device on a new project for the first time and you want to install libraries and that sort of thing so the next thing you want to do if you haven't is you actually want to install something called pip so pip is the python installation tool and People who are intermediate or advanced watching this video probably don't want to see this part, but if you are a beginner, you do want to install PIP. I already have it installed actually, so I'm not going to go ahead and run it, but this is the installer that allows you to install third-party packages and will install a third-party package for the MPU9250 that will allow us to get the devices very easy. So you can just click enter and run that. I'm not going to because I already have PIP. And the next thing you want to do is after you have PIP is you want to run pip3 install smbus2 okay so this is to allow you to communicate with the device so it's a package that allows you to communicate with the device and once you have that the next thing you want to do is you just want to pip3 install 
the package that allows us to interact with the MPU 9250 very easily. And it's called MPU 9250 slash JMDev. It's a very nice library, very simple to understand and it will allow us to get the accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer values in just a few steps. So I think I spelled that wrong. Pseudo pip, I forgot to write install, sorry about that. So to pseudo pip install this library. Okay, perfect, I already have it, but yours should take a brief moment. It's a very small library to actually use. So now we have everything on the system level and the Python level to actually start interacting with the MPU 9250. And of course the hardware level, we set everything up. Our device is plugged in and we just want to go to some editor. I use Thani, which is my favorite editor for these sort of things. And we're just going to create a Python file. I already have a Python file created. If not, you could just click this plus new and name the, Py file, the Python file, whatever you want, of course, with a .py extension. And we just want to essentially copy this code in. This is the basic code to get values in all nine degrees of freedom with this device. Okay, so in this code, what we're doing is we are just doing some imports here from the library we pip installed and time, which is a standard Python library. And we're just initializing the MPU 9250 object with some parameters here. We're not gonna go into too much detail about these parameters. Just know you can actually adjust the range of the gyro, the accelerometer and the magnetometer with these parameters. So it is a really simple library to use because it allows you to do that very easily as opposed to having to go to the actual registers on the device. You could just pass in these constants here and play with the ranges of the gyro and the accelerometer. So once we have that, we just initialize the MPU 9250 using this library, and we just start to read values every second. So we're just have a one second interval. You can play with this based on however you like, and we're just going to print those values on the screen. So if you do have an, an authentic MPU 9250, you should see no issues using this library, and you should see magnetometer values on the screen. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this code, okay? And so one thing you're gonna notice if you have this device is that although if your device is stationary, you'll see values here for accelerometer and gyro, which doesn't necessarily make sense because the gyro, first of all, should be all zero when this thing is in a resting state. And just know you have to do something called a calibration process, which we'll show in the next tutorial to show you how to remove these offsets because unfortunately, in all accelerometers, they do come with an inherent bias, especially cheaper accelerometers like the MPU 9250, MPU 6050, that we actually have to calculate and subtract out on the code level because these things come error prone from the factories. So don't be alarmed if you see some slight off values here or even larger off values for the acceleration because we will do some algorithms to calculate those out and make sure we get more accurate representations of the acceleration in the gyro. The last thing I wanna leave you here before I end this tutorial, as you could see the acceler the accelerometer data is structured like this with about zero for the first value, zero for the second value, and close to one for the, the last value. So that is actually the Z axis. And my accelerometer is actually sitting flat on the table. So, so Z should be actually about one a G. So this thing is measuring in Gs, not meters per second squared and using this library. So that is about one G. And if I start to move the accelerometer around, you will see that these values will start to go up. And if I move it, around circles and along different axes, we will see different changes in the gyro and the accelerometer. So that is pretty cool. I do not want to move it too fast because my jumper wires aren't that secure today. So it might ruin the communication. Other than that, I think I showed you guys the basics of getting connected to the MPU 9250 using Python and the Raspberry Pi. Hope you learned something. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy.